hi guys uh, welcome to accounting online uh, in this video I'll show you how to run the VAT return in Sage 50 accounts so this is the tutorial number one um, and I'll show you some of the basics like how to set up the VAT scheme in um, Sage 50 accounts and in my next tutorial which is going to be part two uh, I'll show you how to run the actual VAT return okay so I'll go to my Sage and before going to VAT module um, straight away, I'll go to uh, settings and then I'll click on configuration. So once you have uh, clicked on the configuration, you will see this window. And here there are different tabs, but for the VAT purposes, um, I will click on tax codes. So in this in this in this window, uh, you can see all of the tax codes, uh, which have been set up uh, in the system uh, by default so uh, starting with t0 so like t0 is the zero rate supplies and then we have t1 which is standard rate supplies and it goes right up to t99 uh, but not all of the tax codes are set up so if you want to set up a new tax code for yourself uh, you can you can set up actually um, which then you need to include in the VAT return so what you need to do is so these are all the tax codes which are already there and when you do the VAT transaction so you need to choose one of these uh, tax codes uh, so starting with T0 and then we have um, T4, uh, T5 then we have T7 uh, so in VAT you know the VAT can be very complicated especially if the company is uh, dealing with the customers uh, based in EU countries so if if the company if your company is dealing with the customers based based in um, in any of the EU countries then you need to use a different tax codes it may be T7 it may be T8 depending upon the nature of the business and depending upon the nature of the transaction so this is one area where you, where you need to be very very careful so I would like to keep this video as simple as possible and I'm not gonna touch anything uh, with the EU transactions okay so if I click on one transaction let me just show you let's say t1 so you will see the details so the tax code is t1 rate of VAT is 20% which is the maximum rate of VAT in 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 UK and this one this box is ticked it say, it, it says include in the VAT return so this, this tax code is included in the VAT return so when you run the VAT return so all the transactions carrying T1 tax code it these will be included in the tax return okay reverse charge is a different thing uh, enable EC code no T1 is nothing to do with any transactions uh, with the EU uh, customers or the EU suppliers so you don't need to tick this box I won't suggest you to do anything because uh, these are rightly set up so I just wanted to show you, okay, if you want to have a look uh, where the tax codes included in the, T, uh, in the VAT return and the tax codes not included in the VAT return, this is the area where you need to come. I will press OK and if I go back, as you all know that there is one tax code which is called a non vetable tax code and it is T9. If I click on this one, you will see, so the tax code is T9, the rate is 0. And it is not included in the VAT return. This is why it is called non vetable tax codes. So any transactions, uh, which is so any transaction which is not the VAT transactions, so you need to put T9 tax code with is uh, with that transaction. And um, this box should be unticked. And I'm gonna press OK. Okay. And if you go further down, you will see there are other uh, uh, tax codes also. Uh, let's say T25 so if your company is on flat rate scheme and you buy any item um, capital asset where the cost is uh, 2000 or more including VAT then you need to include that item in your VAT return normally under the flat rate scheme uh, purchases are not included but any capital item where the cost, uh, cost is uh, 2000 or more uh, then you need to record this transaction in Sage with T25 it is including the tax return um, nothing to do with the EU transactions and it says flat rate capital asset and once you have done this one just press ok uh, you know there are certain tax codes which I say uh, 
are the most commonly used tax codes. Uh, so the first one is T0, which is zero rate supplies. Then we have T1, which is standard rate supplies. Then we have T2, which is exempt transactions. Uh, so exempt transactions, there is no VAT rate, there is no VAT implication, but these transactions are included in the VAT return. And first three, and then we have T5, which is reduced rated uh, transactions. Normally these are utilities, you know, gas, electricity, and these things. And if you click on this one, you will see the tax uh, percentage, the VAT percentage is 5%. <clears throat> So just click on OK, and the the last one in the most commonly used tax code is T9, which is non vetable tax code. And I showed you earlier that this is not included in the VAT return. So I'll just click on OK and close this window. I won't be saving any changes. I will go to settings again, and then I'll click on company preference. So if you have um, set up a password. Uh, for your company, it will ask you the password before you could come to this company preference window. So here is another VAT uh, tab. So I will click on VAT and okay. So here is a window where you need to put your VAT number. So once your company is VAT registered, you're gonna have the nine-digit VAT uh, number from HMRC. So you can come here and you can put the number here. So non vetable tax code, as discussed. Um, before so T9 is a non vetable tax code and item VAT amendable so any transactions where you want to put the VAT amount uh, manually so then you need to click on this item VAT amendable box and the VAT scheme so uh, if I click on this drop down so uh, in Sage there are four uh, default uh, schemes already set up in 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 say in sage so the first one is called standard vat the next one is vat cash accounting scheme so both of these schemes are almost similar but the the standard vat is on the accrual basis and cash accounting is on the cash basis so when you actually receive or pay cash so then you calculate the vat so there are two schemes under flat rate um, so one is called invoice based and one is called cash based so you need to uh, make sure what uh, scheme you are actually uh, your, your company is actually on what scheme so because you know following the wrong scheme will will give you the wrong numbers which can uh, create a problem for you and hmrc may be coming uh, may be coming after you because if you don't pay them the right amount of vat uh, you should be ready for some inquiry you know some letters from hmrc if you want to validate your VAT number, you can check this box. And uh, then we have EC sales. EC sales, I'm not going to discuss this one because if you have to do the EC sales list, some companies have to do EC sales list with they are selling to the customers based in EU countries. Then these three boxes are these three boxes are relevant to you. Okay. Then we have EC e submission uh, submissions credentials. So your user ID with HMRC and your password, because if you want to submit your VAT return from Sage 50 accounts before submission, it is going to ask you these details. So you can put all your um, details here and then you can put the uh, details. Uh, let's say your name, uh, phone name and surname and telephone number and email. So uh, you know what happens when you're working in a practice? So, and you're working um, on behalf of your clients, this is where you put your details, like the agent's detail. So you're gonna put the agent details here and you're gonna put the partner's detail here. Okay, then we have uh, three boxes. And the number one is ECVT description. So when you are selling to the customers based in um, EU countries, uh, and if you want to show some description, particular description invoice on uh, on your sales invoices, then you can come here and change the details here. And these are three boxes, and then you can put more details. Press OK. HMRC payment, uh, it's just not there. And this one is important, verification settings. So verification setting, this is very, very important. And there are so quite uh, some boxes, and these are all ticked. So the first one is duplicate entries. 
identify possible duplicate transactions and if you have done any transactions twice in Sage and you're not sure make sure that this box is ticked and when you actually run the VAT return these transactions will be highlighted uh, okay so missing entries identify invoices or credits which have not been updated so in Sage what happens if you're using invoices and credits module here so when you raise an invoice or credit note um, it just sits there uh, until you update it so uh, when while running the VAT return so, uh, if this box is ticked Sage will highlight all the uh, invoices and credits which have not been updated so this is very very important uh, box identify purchase orders which have been delivered but not invoiced so it, it's the same thing just like the first option so identify transactions with a VAT value where the tax code is not included in the VAT return. Let's say you raise an invoice or your colleague raise an invoice and the tax code they put with the invoice is uh, T9. So when you run the VAT return, uh, Sage will highlight the transactions uh, with the T9 tax code uh, uh, invoices uh because the, the t9 is a tax code which is not included in the vat return so it will highlight all the transactions where the tax code is not included in the vat return okay now the next box is check vat values on transactions for possible errors so um so all the transactions where the you know the maximum rate of vat is the vat tax is 20 percent so all the transactions where the uh VAT tax is more than 20% it will be highlighted and the transactions where the VAT uh, rate is less than 18, 18% so it will also be highlighted so this is a kind of like threshold of 2% uh, okay the next thing is identify sales and purchase transactions not using your most common tax code uh, specified below so this is your most commonly used tax code which is T1 and all the transactions uh, carrying the tax code other than T1 these will be those will be highlighted when you run the VAT return yep it doesn't mean that those transactions are going to be wrong but just because you have you have uh, given um, criteria here so all the transactions other than tax code T1 those will be highlighted and you can just go through these transactions quickly Okay, identify journal transactions where the tax code is not selected as non vertebral tax code. You know the journals, accounting journals or adjustment journals, these are the journals which you do normally at the month end or at the year end. And this is these journals are nothing to do with the with the tax, with the VAT, because VAT is normally run on the cash basis. And these journals they are done for the accounting adjustments on the accrual basis so these are journals normally needs to be done with uh, with tax code t9 so th th those journals should not have any impact on your VAT uh, calculation yep so any journals where you haven't select the um, tax code t9 it will also be highlighted in your VAT calculation Okay, identify possible incorrect EC transactions. So if you have done any, um, recorded any EU transactions in Sage, um, normally, uh, so these will also be highlighted. You know, the normally in the EU EC transactions, what happens, whether you have to claim VAT or whether you do not, do not need to uh, calculate the VAT amount. So all those transactions where the, trans where the tax code is not correct, uh, those will also be highlighted when you run your VAT return. So these are a uh, few VAT uh, settings before running the actual VAT return. Um, I hope so you learned something from this video and if you like this video please like share and subscribe my channel accounting online. Thank you.